Good morning, App Properties. It is Friday, August 7th, and Kevin and I are here for another Fired Up Friday. Yes, good morning. Hope you have your coffee. We've got a couple of topics for you. The first one we're going to dive right into is backup offers. And so the reason we want to talk about backup offers quickly is because we know that we have multiple offers happening in the market right now. And we also know that when we choose an offer and begin to work with an executed offer and we go through the attorney review, we go through the inspection period, we know that these deals sometimes fall apart for various reasons. But what happens when a deal falls apart, we typically then have to scramble. We reach out to the agents with the buyers that also had submitted offers. And what it does is it actually shifts power to the buyer. They know that the seller has had a deal that falls apart. And so they, in theory, have the upper hand. And we end up having to renegotiate another deal again. So what we're suggesting is, is that you actually get an executed backup offer. And this is something that not all of us are aware of, which is why we're talking about it. But it's really simple and it is really effective. What it does is if you get an executed backup offer, you have an offer where the terms are all negotiated and agreed upon so that when the first offer falls apart, this offer slides immediately into place. There's no renegotiating of any of the terms. There's no scrambling to find, the, uh, find out if buyers are still interested. So I'm gonna show you right here quickly how this works with the two forms that we have. The first is the 7.0 contract. And you can see on the left-hand side of the screen here, it is clause 31. It is down towards the end of the contract. But what this clause says, in addition to what the rider, rider 11 from Carr says, is that this contract is only valid if the prior contract is canceled. So there's no risk to the seller, there's no risk to the buyer, because these are not enforceable. This contract is contingent. This backup offer is contingent upon the cancellation of the first offer. So take a look at these, learn how to use these because it can be really effective as a listing agent to ensure that you have backup offers in the event that your first offer ends up falling apart. Yeah, Kevin, I think that that is um, really great information and extremely timely. You know, there are a lot of people out there that are dealing with multiple offer scenarios, and it's so important to make sure that if your number one position falls apart, you're kind of ready to go with number two. So I wanted to talk a little bit today about opportunities, and this is specifically focusing on the fact that we are never too big for any one deal. I just recently had in one of my offices a situation where a pretty busy agent had a rental opportunity and it was actually something that if she wasn't quite so busy she probably would have taken it on herself and it wasn't a huge rental it was maybe fifteen hundred dollars somebody was looking for something in one of the suburban markets and so she looked for somebody to pass on the opportunity to and so she reached out to some brokers that were maybe a little bit newer to the business to see if one of them was interested and it was really kind of an eye-opener because the first person that she talked to asked a lot of questions and said, you know, well, how much is the rental for? Where are they looking? And ultimately, this particular individual decided uh, to not move forward and decided to pass on the opportunity. So this broker then moved on to another different broker that is pretty brand new to the business. And they didn't even ask any questions. They just jumped in and first of all said, thank you so much for the opportunity. I'm going to take great care of these folks. And, you know, fast forward a couple of weeks later, this individual ended up securing a rental for this particular client. But in the process, they are already referring business to this agent who took this rental opportunity on. And so what I think the message is here is that it isn't just the one deal. You have to recognize that when you get a new person in your sphere of influence and somebody else that you get to work with, it isn't just that transaction. It is any of the additional transactions they may do down the road. It is all of the people in their network that want you do a phenomenal um, job for them are going to actually pass on your name and continue to help you grow your business. And it's interesting because Kevin and I this morning were chatting about this scenario. And I know that, you know, I had my own personal experiences with recognizing uh, the idea of just taking an opportunity when it's presented. But he had this happen about seven years ago when he was selling a suburban broker out of our Winneka office passed on a lead to him and his first initial reaction was eh 
you know, I don't know, this is, you know, maybe not the best use of my time, but he actually changed his mindset and decided, you know, I'm just going to take this on. These people wanted to find an investment property in the city of Chicago. It turns out that that one opportunity led to 10 other opportunities down the road in the next two years, because these individuals ended up wanting to continue to invest as they had the money available to them. So here's what I'm going to leave you with. You're never too big for any one opportunity. So, you know, remove that from your mindset but also recognize the fact that this business is about relationships and the more people that you can develop relationships with, the better your business is going to be in the long term. So make it a great weekend, but keep those things in mind. Yes, we hope everyone has a great weekend. And remember, Amy, there's no better time than now. To do it now. <laughs>